One of the applications of integrals is to find the fluid pressure on a plate that is submerged vertically into some sort of liquid with a constant weight density. If I have the plate submerged horizontally, the entire plate will be at the same depth as it is submerged. And so the fluid pressure on that would be the weight density times the depth at which it's submerged. But if you take and you submerge the plate vertically, then each part of that plate is at a different depth in the um, liquid. And so it has a different weight that, or pressure that is applied to it. With that sort of situation then, we can use our calculus and our application of integrals to add up the pressure that is happening on the plate at the varying levels of the depth in order to find the um, total sum of the fluid pressure on that vertically submerged plate. So here we say force exerted on a fluid of constant weight density, W, per unit of volume against a vertical plate, so again it's got that varying depth that it's sitting at, is the um, force is equal to your weight density of the liquid that it's submerged into times the definite integral from A to B of H of Y times L of Y dy. Now H of Y is the depth, so since it's going through a specific like different varying depths, that's part of the process that is a variable component involved in it. And L of the Y is the length of a horizontal strip. Now let's look at an example. So this says a vertical gate is in the shape of an isosceles trapezoid that's eight feet across the top, six feet across the bottom, with a height of five feet. What is the fluid force on the gate by water if the top of the gate is four feet below the water. So over here I have a table of some just common weight densities in pounds per cubic feet and what their weight densities are. And then I've got a diagram that I've already started using the specifics of the problem. Now when we set these up, oftentimes we want to set it up where the x-axis is at the surface of the water. Um, times where that might not be as convenient is if you have some sort of a figure that might be circular or something like that, then it's possible just trying to utilize the placement of the axis. You might have the circle centered at the origin and then adjust for where the surface of the water is. But here I just have that isosceles trapezoid. So I'm going to have my x-axis be at the surface of the water. And when I'm looking at setting up the gate, I'm going to have it where I'm going to take in account some of the symmetry that we get because of the isosceles trapezoid. So it says that um, we have the isosceles trapezoid is eight feet across the top. Okay. So since it's eight feet across the top, we're going to utilize the symmetry by going four feet to the right and four feet to the left. And then it is five feet tall, so we'll come down five feet. And then it is six feet across the bottom, so that'd be three feet to the right, three feet to the left. And it's also sitting four feet below the water. So I went and did every unit with that in the setup of my axis to be a foot. So I went down one, two, three, four. So there's my four feet below the water. Do the top of the trapezoid. Went down five more from there. Do the bottom of the trapezoid. And then connected the sides for the isosceles trapezoid. Now when I look back to what I need to do to set up the integral, I have my h of y is the height that we'll do, so we'll need to take into account that. We need the definite, um, the endpoints of the definite integral. And L of y is the length of a horizontal strip. So think of just a representative horizontal strip within your gate. So let's say we just have a representative horizontal strip there. 
notice it's coming across um, equally spaced to the left and to the right of the y-axis. So if I can figure out an expression for that horizontal strip from the y-axis over to the side and get it where I would be able to have an expression for it all the way along, then I'll just double that and that'll give you the, to the total um, length of that horizontal strip. Now since we are doing horizontal strip, they're thin and their thinness is perpendicular to the y-axis, that's why it is dy. And so when we're setting up our expression to go in here, we need to solve our equations x is equal to an expression in y's to plug it in for our um, integrand when we're going through. So what do we have from this? Well, from the way that we set up the axis, this point right here on the trapezoid, remember it's eight feet across the top, so that's four feet over, and then it's four feet below the surface of the water. So that ordered pair is four for the x-coordinate and negative four for the y-coordinate. Now, because the trapezoid is five feet, um, as its height, then this gives me, I went down four and then down five more. So my y coordinate of this point will be negative nine. Also, the um, span across the bottom is six feet and we evenly split it on either side of the y axis. So that point is right three down nine. Now our horizontal strips are hitting this edge of the trapezoid, and that's just the line. So I just need to find the equation of that line, and that'll give me this part of the horizontal strip. And then I'll just double it, and that'll give me the length of the entire horizontal strip. Now to find the equation of the line connecting two points, we need to find the slope. So the slope is the it's three coming in, negative nine. The slope is the change in y, so negative nine minus negative four, over the change in x is three minus four. So I get a slope of negative five over negative one, or five. So that's my slope, and then we're gonna put that through point slope form, so y minus y sub one equals m times a quantity x minus x sub one. So that gives me y minus, and we're gonna use this four common negative four point. So y minus negative four my, um, equals m five times a quantity x minus four. Now when you take care of the double negative, distribute your five through, I have y plus four is equal to five x minus 20. But remember, we want this as x equals an expression in y's because it's dy because we did the horizontal strips. We did um, some thin strips that are running horizontally. So I need to solve this for x, not for y. So you're gonna add 20 and divide by five. And we get x is equal to, so we'll have y plus 24 over five. And so our length, our L of y, is two times that y plus 24 over five. And just to help us later knowing we're going to do this within an integral and then be able to use some of our properties of definite integrals, I'm going to write this length of y as two fifths times the quantity y plus 24. And again, just because that will help me later on with the work with our um, integration. Okay, so let's come over with that information and set up the definite integral. So our force is equal to um, the work with our weight density of, we've got to see what liquid is in here because that kind
constant changes depending on the liquid. It's water, and it doesn't say it's seawater, it says it's water. So that's 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So we're just going to put our 62.4 here. And then our definite integral. Now our definite integral is taking and adding up all of the different depths of this horizontal bar. Now remember, it's going to start and go through the entire region. So it's going to start at the bottom and then work its way up. So that's coming from a y-coordinate of negative 9 up to a y-coordinate of negative 4. Now the depth. We know that the pressure gets more as it gets further into the depth of the water. We've set this up so that we have our x-axis along the surface of the water. So when I put my expression for h of y being the depth, I want that to be a positive number, but I've set up my coordinate system so that these are negative numbers just having that at the surface. So my depth is actually the opposite of y, so negative y. And then our length of our horizontal strip is what we calculated over here from the picture. So that's 2 fifths times y plus 24 and then, then times the dy. All right, so to work with integrating this, we have that constant factor of 2 fifths, and this is why we actually wrote our expression in the manner that we did. So we're going to factor out the constant factor of 2 fifths. So 2 fifths times the 62.4 gives me 124.8 over 5 times my integral from negative 9 to negative 4 and then we're going to distribute the negative y through this y plus 24 to get ready to integrate so that's negative y squared minus 24y dy integrating our force is 124.8 divided by 5 times our letter base to number exponent. Add 1 to the exponent and divide by that. So I have negative 1 third y cubed minus, add 1 to 1, you get 2. Divide by that, I get minus 12 y squared. And that's evaluated from negative 9 to negative 4. And remember, you plug in the top number minus plug in the bottom number. So our force is 124.8 over 5 times negative 1 third times negative 4 to the third minus 12 times negative 4 squared. And then subtract off of that plugging in the bottom number. So in parentheses, we have negative 1 third times negative 9 to the third minus 12 times negative 9 squared. And when you work through all of the calculations for that and get your final result, you'll get 13,936 pounds.